Hello and welcome everyone to this next episode on anubotrainings.com. In today's demo session, we will talk about the difference between HANA CDS and ABOP CDS. So the major question which comes in most of our mind, do we have something like a HANA CDS concept also? So my majority of you have attended my ABOP on HANA Kames for HANA training. You would know that there is a concept of ABOP CDS. We can use ABOP CDS, add annotations out there, create OData services, create associations, create saddle services, create Fury applications on top. But do we have a similar concept of HANA CDS? Or I've heard about HANA CDS in my company, but I'm not really sure what is it. Is it same as ABOP CDS and how it's different? So meet three developers uh, in a conference. The first developer asked this question, do we have a HANA CDS also? or do we have a CDS concept or CDS views in HANA also? The second developer who is a native HANA developer will actually say yes, we do have that concept and we can use that by the help of HANA Web IDE with XS Advanced Architecture. Now the third developer who is thinking about yes, it's true and it's a concept which is a same concept conceptually but different flavor of CDS. Now the next question comes as an ABAP developer, as for HANA developer, does it really make sense for me to learn HANA CDS? Answer is no. Then whom it is related to? If you are an ABAP developer, you never ever ever work with HANA CDS actually. You will only work with ABAP CDS. Then where does the HANA CDS coming from? And what is this concept and how do we use them actually? So let's understand once again with our architecture of the system typically how and when do we use HANA CDS and when do we use ABOP CDS. So in, in, in general, if you have an ABOP system and ABOP on HANA system where your ABOP system is running on top of HANA database, here you will create basically a CDS view in ABOP system using a tool called ADT. So we use a web development tool on Eclipse and using the same we will create CDS views or CDS entities as part of ABAP system. Of course multiple of them and when we activate them they will create the necessary runtime object which is nothing but a view. It's called a HANA view. Yeah. Now this view is created inside of index server of HANA which is the actual database engine or in-memory computing engine. This is the actual database which is so-called in-memory database. This is where you have your, your column store and your row stores. All your database objects are persisted inside index server. So what we do is why we create CDS is we will use top-down approach. We will create CDS, activate them. On activation, a HANA we use created. So this database server understands SQL language only. But when we create CDS view, we don't have to type any SQL. We just have to write a CDS with its own format, which is easy to understand, easy to read. And that would generate the complicated necessary SQL with the joins and everything behind the scene. Why we do that is to take advantage of code to data paradigm, which we learned as part of our ABAP on HANA training. Now, if you are an ABAP developer or an S4 HANA developer or an ABAP on cloud developer, this is what you will supposed to do. More than this, you should not really worried about HANA CDS. But if you are a native HANA developer, which means in your company, there is no ABAP, no ABAP system at all. Your company just bought an access to HANA platform, maybe on SCP or on an on on-premise system. There is no ABAP system, there's no BW system, there's no BI system, nothing. Just a HANA box, only this you have it in your company. In this case, what we typically do is we have a native HANA development using Access Advanced Server. So this is a lightweight application server which is part of HANA platform. Just like your ABAP application server, this is a HANA application server. And here it supports variety of runtimes to develop applications using Node.js, Java, UI5, stuff like that. At the same time, we have something called HDI concept, HANA deployment infrastructure. HDI will 
will be a component inside HANA which will allow you to deploy the views in uh, as a HANA views. So what we develop in XSA projects which are created again on Web IDE, we create something called a HDB CDS file. And this is what actually called HANA CDS. Now this HDB CDS file can be created to create database table. It can be used to create views. And that's when, when we create maybe a, a view using HDB CDS file. And it does the same thing when you activate, it will create a, a HANA view inside the HANA system. So you never write an SQL, rather you like a JSON-like syntax. So which will again create the runtime object in index server. So if you really look at, this is one flavor of the CDS, and this is just another flavor of the CDS. Conceptually, they does the same work when you activate the producer runtime object, so-called a HANA view. To be very precise, it's called a column view. Okay, so let's go to the system. We, we, we have learned a lot about ABAP CDS in our ABAP on HANA training. But this video is dedicated to the people who are doing native HANA development or just wanted to understand the difference between these two. We will now look at this HANA CDS concept quickly in a in a in a short uh, short demo. So what I'll do now is I'll switch it over to my HANA system, and here is where I will now create a HANA CDS. So my requirement is to create a simple HANA view, HANA CDS view, and on top of that HANA CDS view, we will also do an aggregation. So what I'll do is I just create a new file and we have a HANA CDS artifact option here. And I will name it as, let's say, Anubhav Demo. Click on Create. And we have a graphical way of modeling it or we can also just go to the, the code editor to write the content. So you can go to, go to the code editor. So just for information, guys, I've already created some demo database table for this for this example, and I'm going to use them. So they are fairly simple. If you ever work with ERP, you would know the basic tables of sales order and purchase order. So I will use a purchase order table, uh, which is already created by me before this demo. Of course, you want to understand complete Native HANA development, you can subscribe my access advanced training with Native HANA, but I'm just going to cover this in a nutshell over here. So let's put view, and we can say purchase order view I would like to create as select from purchase order dot purchase order table. Now what do we mean by this 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 thing called PO? This PO means a context. A context refers to um, a, a table which I'm referring from from somewhere else actually. So that's what called a context. So I can say import or using and I will use my context uh, as transaction as PO. Now, where do you see this transaction? It's basically an, another CDS file I'm referring outside from here. So if you go to my data model, you can see I have a transaction CDS already created before this demo. Of course, in my native HANA training, we will do all these things step by step, line by line, no copy paste of code. But this is where I have my, my table related to the purchase order. So that's what I'm referring to. You can see this is uh, the purchase order table. I'm going to refer, uh, which is part of my uh, transaction uh, context. So I'll say P purchase order table, and I will pick it up some of the properties like purchase order ID, uh, gross amount, and the life cycle status. Three properties will pick it up from there. So let's come back to our CDS. And we will just pick here purchase order ID. As let's say order ID. Then I'll pick it up gross amount. And I'll pick life cycle. status and we are good let's end the view save the file 
So this is my CDS file. I mean, essentially you are doing the same thing in ABAP also when you create an ABAP CDS. The difference is in ABAP CDS, you will create one file per CDS, but here you can actually jumble them together as, as one context and multiple views inside, which is what I'll show you now. So I have PO orders now, and let me just activate this file. Uh, so here the activation process is called build process because we use HDI deployer, which is going to deploy and generate the necessary SQL command to create the runtime object. So I will have to do a build process. It's more of an activation process what you do in ABAP. So I'm going to right click and I'll say build. And the build process will now generate the necessary runtime object. And the runtime object in this case is going to be a, a column view inside my HANA container. The build is successful. Let's switch it over to the HANA container view. This is my database explorer where we can see the runtime objects. And I will come to my container. So in new access advanced architecture, those who are doing native HANA development, you know that we have a container concept. And here is where we will have our, our view, which is which will be generated by the system. So basically it creates a creates a normal view here. So I go to the views and we should see now a new view with the with the name which we have given inside the inside the CDS definition. Okay, it's asking me to log in. Just give me a second. And now if we just come down, you can see Anubau demo PO orders is created. And that's exactly holding my three columns. This is the runtime object. And now you can see what HDI deployer does behind the scene. This is the equivalent select query, uh, sorry, the, the DDL statement generated by the system. Okay, let's open. That's our runtime object. And now what we're gonna get is this value. Now, what you can also do now is create a view on view on this. Maybe you can go back to the design time object and we will create an, a view on view. I would like to know what is my total status per order and how many orders are there per status and what is the total amount. So I create another view, you can say consumption view or can like you do in ABAP systems, consumption view, C underscore, uh, maybe order status to aggregate the values so that we can show this in a Fiori application. And we can have here the view PO orders, which is already created. And over here inside, we will write our condition. So I'll say status. And we can write a case expression, case status. That's the beauty of CDS concept. I mean, same thing we can we can do in ABAP and we can do it here. So I have status P, let's say paid. I have different, different statuses. So I'm just going to put them up. And there's status. And then we have count. Order ID as number of orders. And we do a sum of cross sum. Fantastic. So that's our view, which is aggregating the data. So now you can see, oops, it should be then. So I have different statuses. I have P for paid, R for rejected. C for confirmed. And for new. So all of these calculations are performed deep into the database level. And their database will actually do it much faster as compared to your ABAP layer or any application layer. 
nice let's save and build this design time object one more time so what you do in ABAP is an activate and here you do a build so let's build this so this is called native HANA development which we do typically if our company is purely on HANA database they don't have any <laughs> any ABAP system so it failed let's see the error Okay, you can see since we are doing aggregation, we have to include group by clause. Let me just add. And we say status. Let's build now. Couple of seconds, and we should see a new CDS view would get activated, and this will generate the necessary HANA view. Let's go back and see the view here. Just come down and now we have this consumption view C order status. What is the benefit? Why we do this? Let me show you open data. So now you will see the aggregated data coming from database, which is much better and much faster. What you can now switch over to the analysis right away and you can see how many total orders I have in the system, which are blocked or canceled or confirmed that number of orders it's right away shows you as an analytics. This kind of things which a developer can typically do it out of the box. Of course, tomorrow this can be exposed in, as an output for data and then you can just use it in a Fiori app to give it to your end user, which is what we learn end to end in our native HANA development training. If somebody is working purely on HANA database, then this is something which is going to be useful for you uh, in, in, in the way forward. But if you are working as an ABOP developer, uh, this is certainly not something which you would want to do it. Uh, and in fact, you will never get a direct access to HANA database in your company. They will not give you, if you're using an S4 system or an ABOP on HANA system, you cannot do this actually, uh, typically. So if you're an ABOP developer, we would never do this kind of stuff. We would typically focus only on the, on the ABOP layer, on ABOP CDS not on the HANA series. But this was uh, just a question from many of you since a long time. What is HANA CDS? Can we really see a flavor of HANA CDS? Uh, can it be really used? So that's what we, we try to learn it. So if you see what we did just now, it was a CDS file inside HANA access A server, which is what got activated and created a HANA view. This is what we saw. And in case of ABOP system, you create a CDS view on ABOP which you activate and creates again a HANA view inside. The idea is to achieve go to data paradigm and process most of the calculations and computations within the within the database and to be very precisely in the in the database engine of HANA. So with that, it's a wrap. I hope this helped you. Feel free to give me a like and share and subscribe this channel for more interesting videos and, and, and interesting concepts like this. For detailed training on HANA Access Advance, you can subscribe our course on anubavtrainings.com. Thank you so much once again, and I'll see you in the next video.